Hi and welcome back. Today I'm getting ready to do some flush riveting that will either conceal or resize a few of the holes on the back plate of the Nuremberg box. The first two holes were used to hold the original cover plate that I had for the keyhole. I need to eliminate those and I also need to resize the four holes that hold the guide blocks for the arm that moves all of the latches. Now I've demonstrated flush riveting you know, quite a few times before, but this time I'm going to be using a slightly different approach. Today I'm going to be doing the flush riveting by inserting a tapered pin into a tapered hole. So that means that I first need to build a tapered reamer so that I can shape the hole to fit a tapered pin. As you can see, there isn't anything special about this reamer. It's just basically a flat bar with square edges and the end of it gets jammed into a standard file handle. You can make these uh, reamers out of just about anything. It doesn't need to be anything special. You know, a recycled file is fantastic because it's designed to cut metal, of course, but I'm just using a steel that's quite a bit softer. It's just a 3 8 round recycled spring steel and it, they work fine. There isn't a lot of forge work to these. Here I'm starting with the handle end of the tool. I'm just going to put a rough point on it so it can fit into a file handle and then I'll turn it around and work on the actual point of the reamer. I'm not going to try to forge the ragged cut edge of the bar into a point. I'm just going to forge around it and cut it off later. It doesn't really matter. This is going to be buried in a handle, so you can really do whatever you want there. It's never going to be seen unless it falls out of the handle. Here I've cut the reamer from the bar and I flipped it around so I'm holding the handle end of the reamer with the tongs and I'm forging the actual working end of the reamer. This is just basic forging, drawing a bar down to a flat taper, but remember that you're working with a steel that has a little bit higher carbon content than mild steel, so you're not going to be able to work as quickly as you would forging mild steel. You have to take your time. Don't overheat it because that will start affecting the grain structure and don't try to use too heavy a hammer to speed things along because that will create a lot of stress in the steel and that could cause it to warp or shatter when you quench it. At this point the forging is done. I'm not going to be bringing it down to its final shape. I'm going to be doing that with a, you know, a grinder or a file, whatever you have. It doesn't really matter. But the important thing about this tool is that all of the faces have to be very, very clean and very, very precise. So trying to forge things down too far is just going to cause more problems. It's better to leave it thick, grind away all the surfaces that you need to get to the final shape. Here I'm further along and all the initial grinding is done and I'm just going to be working over the surface with a file to do the final shaping and to define the corners. The corners are what do the cutting on this tool so they need to be filed very flat and very sharp. The angle of the faces isn't really as important as making sure that you have a very very sharp cutting edge right on the corner. Ideally you want all four faces to be perfectly square with each other but if they're not it really doesn't matter you as long as you have a couple of good cutting edges that bite into the steel you're gonna have an effective reamer
When all the shaping is done, you bring it back in the forge and you heat it up to just above the critical temperature and hold it there for a couple of minutes and then you quench it. Quenching will bring about the maximum hardness that's possible with that particular metal. Here I'm using an oil hardening steel, so I'm quenching it in oil. I don't draw any temper on these. I use them at their maximum hardness. Here in the vise I have a sample piece that I'm going to be flush riveting and I have the reamer right out of the quench. I haven't honed it. I haven't done anything to the edges. This is just straight from the oil. I've cleaned it up and now I'm going to start reaming this hole. I'm working the reamer from one side of the plate only. The wide edge of the reamer is going to be the visible side of the rivet. And it's just simply a matter of reaming the hole until the pin stock that I plan on using just fits in the wide edge of the hole. The process of fitting the pin is really just a matter of filing a little bit, testing it in the hole, making any corrections that are necessary until the full length of the pin is locked into the hole. I first found out about this years ago, but I never really tried it because I was always a little intimidated by it. I thought the precision needed to get this right would have to be just astronomical, but I'm here to tell you it really doesn't. Certainly not for thin stock. I'm sure if you were trying to fit a pin into a three inch block or something, you would have a lot more trouble. But just for fixing holes in sheet metal or even up to one eighth plate, uh, I can't imagine this giving you much trouble. You know that the large diameter of the pin is the same size as the widest part of the hole, so it's just a matter of filing the end evenly to create a taper and then see where you go from there. Now I have the rivet driven into the hole and it's solid, like I was able to cut both sides of the rivet away from the bar without loosening the rivet, so it's already in there pretty tight. Unlike the normal flush riveting process, there are no gaps like from the uh, counterbore that I have to fill in by upsetting the rivet into that space. Everything's already locked in. So the riveting process is really just forcing the sides out even further and creating a head on the underside of the plate to prevent the pin from ever working back out. So this method is a little bit more time consuming obviously, but it does allow you to put a flush rivet in a plate with the minimum amount of hammering, which of course if you're worried about the plate distorting or any missed hammer blows uh, hitting the work, then this is what you need to do. And the final step, as always, is to file the surface smooth. And here's the plate with the rivet cut in half, and you can see how the tapered rivet just filled the entire space. Hi, I'm Dennis, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me by using the email address that I have shown here. If you like the channel and the work that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Every dollar you contribute will bring me one step closer to being able to produce videos full-time.